about you? Well, it has been 30 years since a mysterious illness began striking gay men in San Francisco at an alarming rate. The new documentary, We Were Here, conveys the confusion and loss in the early years of AIDS. The film opens this week at the Castro Theater in San Francisco. Earlier today, I spoke with filmmaker David Weissman, but first, here's a clip. AIDS organizations were just popping up everywhere. I mean, that was, it was called the San Francisco model. I think one of the reasons the San Francisco model worked was because of the size of San Francisco and because of Castro Street itself, that there was a center. San Francisco people came here not for career. They came here because they wanted to live here. And when AIDS came along, the community was sort of inherent in that. It, all it needed was the AIDS epidemic to really make it coalesce. You know, whether it was taking care of people's pets if, when they were in the hospital or bringing them food like open hand, everybody wanted to do something. It was a way the community came together in an amazing way that, you know, politics had never done that. David Weissman, welcome to the program. Thank you, Scott. Nice to be here. Incredibly, it's been 30 years this year since the first cases of AIDS started popping up in San Francisco. Why now? Why did you feel this was the time to tell this story? It was actually suggested to me by a former boyfriend who was much younger and had not lived through that period of time and had heard me speak of it so much. And he suggested the idea to me, and I would never have thought of it on my own. Um, and then when I did start to think about it, it I was realizing that it enough time had passed where probably those of us who did live through it would be ready to tell our stories and that there is more and more interest among younger people because they don't really know much about what happened. So it just, it's like there's a moment, there's a zeitgeist moment. Take us back to that time. I mean, this is the best of times, it's the worst of times. There is a celebration of gay freedom that's just beginning to be felt, and yet there's the beginning of this terrible epidemic. Take us back to the Castro neighborhood in San Francisco during that period, the early 1980s. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a very intense time here. I mean, the, the exploration both of political power and sexual freedom was a, a very heady mix in San Francisco in those years. And yet we were also coming off of the killings of Moscone and Milk, and it was, it was a complicated time. And, um, you know, I remember the first article in the Bay Area Reporter. You know, there was a little article that a cluster of men had been noticed with this rare... Uh, cancer called Kaposi sarcoma and then a month and a half later there was another article saying that another group of gay men had something called pneumocystis pneumonia. And of course at that point they didn't even know what caused it, right? No, it was completely out of the blue and it was like, God, this is so weird that these things are hitting us. And I think it, it for obviously it scared a lot of people and we, you know, had no way of knowing at that point how bad it was going to get. Looking at the film you see these very poignant pictures of these young, vibrant men, healthy, and then other young men, as they develop AIDS, uh, emaciated and gaunt. And I just wonder what impact do you think that physical change, the lesions, the weight loss, had on a community that, you know, placed so much stock in looking good? It was devastating. I mean, and I think that San Francisco experienced that aspect of it in a more concentrated way than almost anywhere else, simply because we had this tiny little neighborhood called the Castro. I think in most other cities, the gay communities were more spread out and also more interspersed with the general population. So you would walk down the street in the Castro and you'd see someone who looked like a, you know, a, a, a kind of a sick old man and you'd realize when you got close that this was someone who was 25 years old that you knew and they were just, you know, ravaged by the disease. You uh, tell this story through the voices of five people, most of whom are unknown to most folks in San Francisco. Why five and why these five? I found fairly early on in the process that what worked for me as a filmmaker and what I hoped would work for the audience was that a, a very large story could emerge out of a small number of really well-told personal journeys. and. Um, it's hard to, I mean, the, these particular five people were people that kind of popped up in my frame of vision at one point, and I thought they would be good for an interview. And I think that cumulatively they do tell a very, very big story, and yet through a very personal and intimate uh, kind of journey. There is a generational divide, in a way, over HIV-AIDS. Uh, young people who are now coming of age um, 
know about AIDS mostly through history, or maybe they've met someone who's living with AIDS. What have you noticed in terms of the audiences? How are young people who see this film, how are they reacting? The, I mean, it's been very gratifying because the young people have been completely blown away by it. And I think, I mean, a lot of times the older folks will say, how do we get young people to come to see this? And my sense is that the young people are going to bring their friends. The, the response from particularly younger gay men, but all kinds of young people has just been very profound. Well, like what? What are they saying? Well, I had one guy at a screening uh, who really was almost unable to talk. And what came out of his mouth is, I am so proud to be a part of this community. And they see the images of the guys on screen and they think, well, what would I have done if those were my friends and they were starting to get sick and die? And how would I have responded to this? What are you hoping people get out of this film as, they, as they're watching it and, you know, afterwards? I think depending on who they are, probably different things. I mean, for those of us who live through it, I th I'm hoping that there's a tremendous sense of validation and a beginning of a healing process because it has not been talked about very much. For people who weren't there, whether they're young gay men or whether they're, you know, school kids in Iowa, I hope they get a, an understanding of the beauty of, a, of the way a community can respond in a time of crisis, particularly a community that doesn't have a lot of friends in the world. Um, I think San Francisco provided a really uh, extraordinary example of people coming together. One of the people who was there during that time is you, uh, and I was there as well. But I'm wondering, in the making of this film, did it change the way you look at that time, uh, that now that you have some perspective and have looked at it through the, the voices and the stories of these five people? It's an ongoing process that, yes, it's definitely altering my perceptions of it. I mean, because one of the things that's peculiar is remembering that in many ways life felt very normal then. I mean, you and I would bump into each other at Cafe Floor, and you know, people still went dancing, and you know, you see pictures of the parades, and it's very celebratory. So it's that mixture of normalcy and incredible abnormalcy that I find sort of more and more fascinating as I think about it. And we should tell people that uh, we were here as beginning a one-week run at the Castro Theater tonight in mm -hmm. San Francisco. And uh, we wish you a lot of luck. Thank you very much, Scott. David Weissman, thank you.